You have a hold on most of the airlines that sell on American uh, as well. I, I mean, American's balance sheet is going to be a mess. So the airlines, are, you know, American, many of them are selling off about 7% today. I mean, what is there to do to fundamentally change the outcome here, barring a vaccine? Well, I think you're right. The vaccine's kind of the key, unless unless we can get the uh, the, the virus curve to really flatline. But I think that, you know, back to what we were talking about, the government could certainly step in with more support. But I also think it's it's important to note that that's almost a double-edged sword, especially for the stronger airlines, uh, like a Southwest, in my opinion, because I think under normal economic circumstances, you might be seeing some of the weaker balance sheet players and higher cost operators, they'd be kind of forced to, they'd just be running out of money, basically. Mm -hmm. And if that would bring capacity down across the industry, you'd see some uplift in pricing for some of the stronger players and they'd be able to capture more market share and maybe recover sooner. But with uh, the government coming in to give potentially more money, and I also think uh, we're seeing that the capital markets be very friendly to airlines, I think we're gonna see a lot of weak players continue to operate below break even for much longer than I would have anticipated. Right, which is uh, a headwind for the, the stronger players like Southwest, uh, as you mentioned, where you have also have a hold. And that's kind of the zombification we talk about. But again, it's not the airline's fault they got into uh, the pandemic. I want to ask you about Boeing, the plane maker. News flow looking a little bit better late today as they're talking about a test flight of that MAX next week. How significant is that? I think that's a, a really critical milestone. Uh, I think it signals that in this effort to recertify Boeing is kind of past the max risk period. Uh, so when I say that, I mean, you know, there was some possibility a, a couple months ago, in my view, that uh, the max might really not be a viable plane again, at least not in the next few years. It might have needed a really big overhaul. But I think what you're, what the signal is now is the FAA is kind of seen on paper and through data what they need to. And it's just a matter of demonstrating now in flight and I think everything that's going to happen potentially next week or in July with this recertification flight, I think Boeing probably internally has already demonstrated through its own thousands of hours of test flights. So I think, I think it's a really strong signal for Boeing that the MAX will be recertified uh, in Q3. And the reason I have a buy on Boeing at the same time as I'm pretty negative on the airline industry is you know, Boeing generated more free cash flow than the entire U.S. airline industry, if you go back to 2018. So there's just a very different business for a duopoly aircraft supplier yeah. uh, with high switching costs for customers and the ability to take uh, production capacity down, whereas on the airline side, it's totally different. So as you're seeing them both struggle and add a lot of debt, I think Boeing is actually undervalued in the situation where the airlines are not in my opinion. Yeah, you have a buy on Boeing, a $231 price target. We're around 170 today. Colin, thanks for your thoughts. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I appreciate you having me. Have a good weekend. You too, Colin.